So atopic dermatitis is one of several eczemas. And I think even that kind of terminology creates a lot of confusion in terms of using eczema atopic dermatitis interchangeably. I like to be ordered. You know, I like thinking about reaction patterns when I try to create a differential diagnosis. Same thing goes for the eczema. So eczemas is your umbrella term. And under that, you have atopic dermatitis, the most common form, contact dermatitis, stasis dermatitis, autosensitization, there are a couple others that go in there too, but I think that using that approach with your lexicon is very helpful. Then importantly, atopic dermatitis is a clinical diagnosis, and that's what makes it challenging because there's no one test that will solidify the diagnosis. Maybe a biopsy potentially could distinguish something else from the eczemas, but it's going to be taking the whole picture in to really define the disease. The history of disease, the quality of the itch, impact on quality of life, the location, and of course, given that there's acute, subacute, and chronic eczema, there are a lot of flavors, even along that spectrum, let alone the full spectrum of atopic dermatitis, of which there are about 12 to 14 different phenotypes, you're starting to get the picture, it can get quite complicated. So I think it's important, one, to hone in on certain features, both in the history, but also within the actual clinical evaluation in terms of poorly demarcated plaques, the quality of the scale, fissuring, serous crust that comes from the spongiosis, the epidermal edema, um, areas that are more typical in terms of flexural areas, but that will change depending on age as well. And then once again, knowing about some of those unique subtypes like follicular or papular or even parigonodularis like But it's tough, and I think that when we try to distinguish from other disease states, also thinking about those mimickers and what are some features that can help push you towards those diagnoses. Psoriasis is a great example. So if you're kind of stuck and of course that dreaded biopsy report of spongiotic psoriasiform dermatitis, and you're like, ha ha ha, no, not helpful. I think it's really important then to look for other signs of psoriasis. If you're thinking about that, look to the nails, for example, look for maybe subtype locations like in the scalp, in body folds. Certainly eczemas can occur in body folds, but there can be some locations that the morphology will push you more towards psoriasis than, than eczema. Seborrheic dermatitis, similarly, location certainly matters. Just be aware of the clinical spectrum in terms of not just your greasy red nasolabial fold plaques, but you also can see thin white uh, plaques or patches uh, extending well beyond the nasal labial folds, especially in darker skin individuals. Also, don't forget the center of the chest. The key, though, is seborrheic areas. Atopic dermatitis is not going to limit itself to just seborrheic areas. Pityriasis rosea is another one. You know, papular eczema can certainly, those little papules can coalesce into a plaque. But with pityriasis rosea, I find the plaques are typically more ovoid. In certain demographics, you can see even purpuric pityriasis rosea. And certain the timing, this is a new onset issue, you know, will rapidly emerge and typically only lasts a good couple of months, where obviously AD is a chronic disease. Even lichen planus, you can sometimes get confused, especially on the lower legs. If you're thinking about maybe chronic atopic dermatitis, you know, thicken hyperkeratotic plaques, especially in darker skin individuals. You know, hypertrophic lichen planus can certainly look like that. Once again, look for locations that wouldn't really fit for atopic dermatitis. Look for nail changes, such as pterygium or uh, 20 nail dystrophy. You know, that, those things I think could be helpful. Look in the mouth, look for oral erosive, or even just plaque um, oral LP, more kind of that lacy reticulated plaques you can see on the buccal mucosa. So I think the key points here are, A, making the clinical diagnosis for atopic dermatitis can be tough. Do not beat yourself up. It can be very difficult. Use not just a single modality like a biopsy to help you with the diagnosis, take in the whole picture, history, family history, medication use, um, the chronicity of the disease, what happens when it goes away, what happens or what makes it come back, uh, location on the body certainly matters, and then looking for unique locations that can distinguish from AD or vice versa to help maybe rule in or roll out other conditions.